your undivided attention and a warm Spooner welcome. Because of that, I have to um, spend a few minutes telling you who I am and where I got my information from. What I'm saying to you is if I were a survivor, if your teachers had told you that I was 95 years old and I personally survived Auschwitz, Dachau, and Buchenwald, I wouldn't have to say a word here. You'd be thinking, boy, this guy's old and he was there. He's not going to be around much longer. I, I should listen. Well, as I told you, I wasn't there. So where, where, is, where is this coming from? Where, where do I have my information? Uh, my personal and professional background, quickly, I grew up probably about, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half from here, maybe a little further, uh, Medford, Wisconsin, north central part of the state. I was a high school German teacher for four years, and I went to law school at the University of Minnesota. I spent two years studying German law in Germany. And then I worked for the United States Bankruptcy Court in Eau Claire for four years, and then I worked for a law firm in western Wisconsin for 13 years. years. That law firm supported this effort of mine with their name on everything affiliated with it. Uh, later, new offices were built, more people were hired, money got tighter, and suddenly me going around doing this became more a sense of tension and problems. The life lesson that I learned in that experience is if any one of you ever in your life develops a passion. And what do I mean by that? I mean a cause that you care deeply about, a cause to which you de dedicate your heart and soul, a cause to which you give your best energies and your best talents to help maybe disabled children, maybe the Special Olympics, maybe abused animals, maybe the homeless, maybe poverty, maybe war, and violence, stopping violence or, or reducing violence, whatever it might be. You develop your heart, your, such a passion in your life, and I hope each of you do. Why? Because you'll be a happier human being, and secondly, the world will have been better because you were here. But my point I'm making that I learned is if you find such a, pa such a passion, and it happens not to be career, your career, be ready for some conflict. My passion for 20 years now has been giving this message. My career is being a lawyer. I tried to work that out for a long time. Ultimately, it didn't work. Now I'm practicing law on my, on, on my own part-time and giving this message as much as I'm able. Actually, it's been a very wonderful change in my life. It was difficult at first. But uh, now it's been, as I say, so far so good. It's been a, been a wonderful change. All right. Well, I'm not here to teach you German today, nor am I here to teach you law. So where did this Holocaust thing start? I really like speaking to young people your age because I would say it was at your age in my life where this passion started in me. Does it, did that mean that when I was sitting in, in middle school classrooms that I knew at, at the age of 50 I was going to be going around giving a message about the Holocaust? I sure didn't. But things will happen in your life. Things will unfold. Your life will follow a path. I hope you find your church does that too as you age and gain experiences. But I will tell you this started with me in the eighth grade and it started with this little book. You can still get this book today. It doesn't look like this anymore. But this was my introduction to the Holocaust in the eighth grade. It's a book called Auschwitz. It was written by a Hungarian doctor, a man who survived this story. And I read this book as an eighth grader in less than a day. And when I put this book down, I was blown away by what I read in here. I was literally in shock at what happened in this thing called the Holocaust. I just couldn't believe what was described in this book. And as an eighth grader, I became possessed with two things. Number one, I wanted to learn all the gory details of the Holocaust. How did those gas chambers work? How did they trick the people to get them in there? All that kind of stuff. I swore to myself in the eighth grade, I have to see those gas chambers with my own eyes someday. I've kept that promise to myself. I've been to a number of the places where the Holocaust happened. Before we're done here today, I'll show you what some of the concentration camp memorials in Europe look like today. Well, the second thing I became fascinated with as an eighth grader was just a very deep-seated question, as I say, just out of that shock that I felt about what I'd read in there. How could this ever have happened, I said as an eighth grader? How could so many people have gone so wrong and engaged in such evil? And just as we're getting started here this morning, 
let's remind ourselves of the level of evil it is we're talking about here. I didn't come up here to Spooner today to tell you about uh, a dozen people committing perjury under oath and lying in a court of law. Nor am I here to tell you about 50 people embezzling money from their employers, stealing money from the job. Nor am I here to tell you about 400 people committing fraud against the Internal Revenue Service and lying or cheating on their taxes. I'm not here to tell you about that level of evil. Now, I came up here to Spooner today to tell you about tens of thousands of people actively engaged in the murder of millions of human beings. Let me say that again. Tens of thousands of people actively engaged in the murder of millions of human beings. Because that's what happened in the Holocaust. This is real, it's true, and it happened not all that long ago and not all that far away from here. Another way to ask that same question that I asked as an eighth grader how this ever could have happened I certainly didn't, didn't phrase it this way as an eighth grader, but I do now as an, an, an adult, and I'd like to treat you as the young adults you are while I'm here with you today. Another way to ask that same question, just to give you another way to look at it, would be this. How can the same culture and people that gave the world Goethe, Schiller, Bach, Beethoven, and the Cologne Cathedral, that architectural masterpiece, one of the most breathtaking sights I've ever seen in my life, how can the same culture and people that gave the world all of those also have given the world Auschwitz, Mauthausen, Dachau, and Buchenwald? Well, as you might imagine, in the almost 40 years now that I've been in the eighth grade, I found an answer to how I believe it happened. And by the time I'm done here today, I'll give you my theory on how the Holocaust happened. I can't guarantee you'll agree with me, but I do think it's the correct one. And I've got a second, even more important theory I will give you while I'm here with you as well. I'm not only going to tell you my, my, my belief or my theory on how this Holocaust happened, I'm going to share with you my thoughts on how, something like, how I believe something like the, the Holocaust could happen again. Anywhere, anytime, including in the United States of America. I'll throw that one at you too. So I've been reading books on the Holocaust ever since the 8th grade. I've been to Germany about 20, 25 times. I was just there for two weeks before Christmas. I uh, lead an exchange program between a group of scouts from western Wisconsin and a group of scouts from Dusseldorf, Germany. I've uh, been to a lot of the places where the Holocaust happened. I've spoken to a lot of survivors. I've spoken to a few perpetrators of the Holocaust. And I've spoken to some bystanders of the Holocaust. I've seen Schindler's List, all those History Channel specials. And I've been giving this speech now for, for coming up on 20 years now. Mostly all over Wisconsin and Minnesota, a couple times in Arizona. And I will, let me just take a minute to, to tell you that um, this, this district holds kind of a special place with me in this life passion of mine because I have been coming to Spooner schools longer than any other school district anywhere. Your district has supported this message. I believe now it's got to be coming up on 16, 17 years. You are this, I've been coming here longer than any other school, and that tells, says very good things to me about your district, your administrators, your school board, your teachers that sacrifice their valuable class time, that believe in this message so deeply uh, that they bring me back every year. And I've been told some of the other things your teachers are doing here. You've got some very good things going on here in the field of Holocaust education, and in very, I believe a very important field. And uh, you stand out among many schools I go to. Sometimes when you're in the middle of something, you got your assignments. You maybe this, this teacher isn't your favorite person, maybe not that one. Sometimes you just forget about all that or you take it all for granted. Well, as an outsider, let me tell you, in spite of some complaints you might have, everybody has complaints. None of us are perfect. No system is perfect. But I will tell you as an outsider, you've got some excellent things happening here in this field. And, um, and again, to me, it's uh, you, you, your district holds an important place with me because of how long they've supported this message and they believe in this effort.